Howdy, it's, it's Tubal Cain again, and this is the fifth and final episode here of Machine Shop Tips covering this variable frequency drive that I have mounted on a drill press. Then you won't hear any more about VFDs until I mount one on my vertical mill, my Bridgeport mill. This is tips number 142, but be sure and watch numbers 138, 139, 140, and 141, which are also on the mounting and the programming of this VFD. Now, the objective of this video is that I'm going to disable the potentiometer that is on the actual VFD, and I'm going to mount another VFD or a potentiometer rather and it's going to be remotely uh, controlled from the top of the drill press here and I will have it calibrated in RPM rather than frequency or Hertz. I bought this 10k uh, potentiometer at Radio Shack and they're only three or four dollars they're quite cheap it has a shaft longer than necessary, so I will cut it off later on as needed. And there are three terminals on it, and I'll show you how to hook those up. Now, I've already mounted a handy box, as I showed you on the top of the drill press. And then this is the cover for the uh, handy box. And I will have the potentiometer sticking through here, mounted, mounted to this cover plate, wired in and a knob on here and then I'm going to calibrate it here with hand written uh, numbers. As mentioned before these directions leave a lot to be desired but it shows on the wiring diagram here where the potentiometer is hooked up and then uh, some other directions right here as to uh, which terminals to use and I'm going to use the 10V the AIN and the common, my uh, color scheme will not be the same. This is yet another page in the directions. Now if you have a different brand than a Tico or a different model than what I have, surely uh, your directions are going to be different but yet there will be some similarities. But here it tells that uh, the uh, Terminal 10V is the supply for the external potentiometer for speed reference. And on the top here, that's the terminal block that is on the bottom of the VFD. And I'm going to use terminals 9, 10, and 11. Be sure and cut the power to the machine and the VFD when you do any of your wiring, although the wiring to these lower terminals is low voltage and probably a little harm, but you should turn it off. And I've already wired and I've used a three conductor thermostat wire, which is 19 cents a foot only. And that way I got all three wires within one uh, sheath. And I have the red one mounted, uh, as you can see, and then uh, the white and the green, and that order on numbers 9, 10, and 11. Then I will put the cover back on the VFD, and I have a little excess wire, which I will have to route yet and tie off, and it just runs up to the handy box on the top, which is bolted or screwed right into the cast iron on the top without any real major uh, changes in the machine so that any of this can be removed if and when I ever want to. The next thing that I will do off camera is I'm going to uh, fasten the three wires onto the potentiometer and solder them and I will do that off camera and again the order will be red, white, and green. And I'll solder those on real quickly then I can fasten this onto the box. But the first thing I will do before I do that is uh, determine at what point here I need to saw off the, the aluminum shank here so it's the right length because that's way too long. I want the actual knob to be close to the lid 
of that handy box. I changed my mind. I think I will show the soldering. And uh, I may or may not have told you the, the uh, wrong connections for the wire, but it's uh, red, white, and green in, in that order. It's real easy to solder when everything is brand new and clean. There we go. Next, I need to program the VFD uh, so that the potentiometer is no longer the one on this control panel, but an external one. So in order to do that, if you remember the uh, function is 05, now uh, 001 again is for this potentiometer, but it's 002 for the external potentiometer. Now notice that this one is no longer activated. It's dead as a doornail. And now the external potentiometer here is activated. Watch the uh, VFD there. And you can see how I can change it from this remote one. And this could be right here on the machine or 20 feet away. It's low voltage, so uh, there could be a, a voltage drop over two grade of a length. But this is a number 18 thermostat wire, so it's quite adequate. Uh, it would have been better if I had a stranded wire. This is a rather stiff and unruly. Now I'm going to mount this on the machine. Finally, I've got the whole thing assembled and mounted here on the top, and I have calibrated it. Now, I have calibrated it such that when I'm on 20, look down at the VFD, this is 100 RPM. Remember, I made those little speed chart. So when I move this up to 200, the VFD is going to read around 30. I'm a little bit over. Or, in other words, 200 RPM. This is 300 RPM, approximately. Let me turn it on. That's 300. That's 400 RPM. And finally, top speed of 60 cycles, 60 hertz, is 500 RPM. Now, if you didn't see the last video where I did all the calibration with the tachometer to uh, change, basically, the, uh, uh, the hertz to RPM, take a look at that. So that's Tubal Kane's speed control. Basically, I do not have to look at the VFD. I just look at this, and, uh, and I've got my speed in the ballpark. And when we're cutting, uh, using a drill, drilling, we just need to be in the ballpark uh, as far as the number. Not necessarily exactly on 200, but we know I'm, I'm a, or I know I'm about 200 RPM right now. So that's Tubal Kane's uh, solution here to converting Hertz to RPM. Hope you enjoyed this little video, and this concludes my uh, five chapters, my five uh, tips on variable frequency drive. Be sure and go back and look at the other ones if this interests you or if this is something you might apply to some of the machinery in your shop. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.